What's the most important thing to Jesus? It's you, and he fights for you. He's not going to back down because someone opposes him. He's not going to give up because someone threatens his life. He's not going to give in because someone puts pressure on him. Jesus is a fighter, a defender, and a protector. He is your champion, advocate, and backs you up when no one else will. Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. The same God of the Old Testament was God and Jesus Christ. And today in our passage in Mark, we see him fighting for us, fighting for this man with a withered hand in this encounter with the Pharisees. And we want to look at three characteristics of Jesus in this story from Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. We see he notices the hurting. He is courageous to help those that are in need. And we see his emotions and feelings of anger, sadness, and compassion. Before we go into our text, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are with us, you lead us, guide us, protect us, that you care for us. Lord, I just pray for each listener that you would bless them, encourage them through this program, draw them to you if they have never accepted salvation before. Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word on this radio program. I pray that everything that is said would be to your honor and glory. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're listening to the Gospel Message radio program. Welcome here. My name is Wes Hepner. Our text today is from Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man with the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? to save or to kill. But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. So far our text today. Last week we had the questions about Jesus, disciples eating from a field on the Sabbath. And the scribes and Pharisees questioned Jesus, and Jesus has to explain that the Sabbath was made for man. And the first thing we see in our text today is that Jesus cares. He notices what's around him. He notices who's in need. Verse 1 of our text. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. Even though... He has just told the scribes and Pharisees that he is Lord of the Sabbath. He goes into the synagogue to worship on the Sabbath. And he cares about this man. Another translation says he sees the man. He notices the man. All these people are worshiping in the synagogue. They're all around Jesus. And he notices the man with the withered hand. My beloved friend, isn't it a wonderful thing to be noticed by Jesus? To have the eye of God on you. Jesus didn't just go to church to sing, to hang out, and go home. He went to church to bless others, to serve. He saw the man's deformed or withered hand. And Jesus didn't just see and move on. He saw it and was going to do something about it. I think sometimes in our day today, we gather every Sunday, we bring our weaknesses and sickness and problems with us. Our emotional problems, our mental deformities, our physical problems our spiritual deformities, and some of it we were born with, some of it others caused, and some of it we did to ourselves. But if we're honest, we're all deformed or sick in some way. And God notices this. And He cares. And I think we should notice as well. We should come to church every week to see who we can bless, who we can encourage, give hope to, strength and support. There's a lesson here with Jesus noticing a man with a deformed hand. My beloved friend, do you notice the people around you who are in need? 
The second thing we see of Jesus is his courage and his strength. He has seen this man with the withered hand. He knows it's the Sabbath. He knows the scribes and Pharisees have just asked him about his disciples eating on the Sabbath. And these same scribes and Pharisees, they're all here. The disciples just broke all those laws going through that field. And Jesus, the Jewish teacher, did not condemn them. And the Pharisees are mad. Verse 2, And they watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. If he heals this man's hand, they were planning to accuse him. Remember, the Bible does not say of Jesus when he goes through the fields with his disciples that he himself ate of the food in the fields on the Sabbath, but his disciples did. But here was a chance that the scribes and Pharisees had to trap Jesus himself. Here was a chance to catch Jesus doing something wrong. And I wonder sometimes if we have the same attitude with someone we don't like. We're waiting for them to do something wrong. Watching for when they will make a mistake. So that we can accuse them. So that we can destroy them. Because that is what we wish for them. If you have that attitude, I can tell you the love of Jesus Christ is is not in your heart because he does not bring that attitude. Look what Jesus does. He asks a question like he so often does. Verse 3 and 4 of our text. And he said to the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said to them, them is the scribes and Pharisees who are watching, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save or to kill? But they held their peace. They didn't say anything. Jesus, he asks this man to stand up, and everyone is watching. What will Jesus do? And then he asks this question. What does your law say about doing good on the Sabbath? And they're stuck. No one could answer him. They were so caught up in their religious laws. Their plan was that if Jesus healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Their whole religious system revolved around the Sabbath. And on this Sabbath, they were ready to trap Jesus. There are even some who believe that this man with the withered hand was placed there by the Pharisees. They wanted to draw Jesus into doing a miracle so he would break their religious laws and they could take action against him. Then Mark tells us in verse 3, Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. Jesus is ready to bless this man with a miracle. Notice the man didn't ask for a miracle or for healing. Jesus decided to do what only God could do. Instantly heal this man's hand. To make sure the Pharisees and all the others who were present could see it, Jesus asked the man to stand up in front of everyone. And I wonder... If the man was embarrassed to stand in front of everyone, and maybe he was, but that embarrassment would soon be forgotten when Jesus heals this man's hand. And then he asks the question in verse 4 that must have taken courage. The question to those that wanted to destroy him. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or destroy it? The scribes and Pharisees' plan was to trap Jesus, get him stuck, to challenge him. But now Jesus challenged them. He puts the question to them with everyone listening. And because it was a question about religious law, everyone would have been looking at the Pharisees to see what answer they would give. And notice their reaction. They wouldn't answer. Some translations say they simply kept silent. They didn't answer Jesus because they felt convicted and ashamed of what they had become and how they viewed others in need. They were stuck. If they said it's right to do good and save a life, then they would lose their opportunity to accuse him. If they said it is right to do evil and destroy a life, which by the way was exactly what they were preparing to do, destroy Jesus, then they would have looked like monsters in front of the people. So they said nothing. Jesus went to the synagogue that day, knowing his enemies were waiting for him. That took courage and strength. He didn't do that for himself. He did that for this man with a withered hand. 
Jesus confronted the Pharisees on behalf of this deformed man. And that took courage. And Jesus knew that his actions that day would be costly. And that took courage. Jesus was doing this to display who he was and to fight for that man with the deformed hand. And for everyone like him, like you and me. Jesus was doing this to display who he was and to fight for that man with the deformed hand and for everyone like him, like you and me. My beloved friend, Jesus still fights for you today. He wants to help you to be free from your sin, to have a relationship with him and eternal life in heaven someday. In this story, we see that Jesus notices what's around him and helps and has the courage to do something. And now thirdly, we see the feeling and emotion of Jesus. Mark 3 verse 5, And when he looked round about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. He was angry that their law and religion was more important to them than their love for this man, than for the well-being of this man. And he was sad, Because when it is that way, you are not free. You are enslaved, maybe not to sin, but to the law. And it's interesting what Jesus does with these emotions. Some of us, when we get angry, we destroy everything around us. We make things much worse than they were before we were angry. See, anger is not the sin, but the actions after the anger. Uh, Do we build up or destroy? Do we help or hurt? Righteous anger can often do great good when it is channeled in the right way. But I wonder what you do with your emotions, your anger. Does it produce destruction, brokenness, go off like a bomb? Jesus, being God, takes this righteous anger and does something good, something to help someone. He tells the man to stretch out his hand and heals him. He takes the anger and sadness for how the scribes and Pharisees are bound by their own law and turns it into compassion. He heals this man and changes this man's life forever. He takes his anger, uses it as courage to heal this man, to go against the religion of the scribes and Pharisees who are already looking for a way to trap him, to destroy him, and are against him. And you know the wonderful thing? Even if there are people in this world looking to destroy you, Jesus is fighting for you. He wants to help you. He wants to have a relationship with you. What do we do with this Jesus, who is faithful to the Father, courageous toward his enemies, angry at sin, and compassionate to those in need? We make a decision to follow him. See, when you see Jesus confronting the Pharisees, he's fighting for you. When you see Jesus teaching the truth, he's fighting for us. When you see Jesus healing the sick, He's fighting for us. When you see Jesus casting out an evil spirit, he's on your side. When you see Jesus hanging on the cross, he's forgiving your sins. When you see Jesus being placed in the tomb, he did that for you. When you see Jesus resurrected from the grave, he's alive for you. And when you see him coming again, he's fighting for you. And the question for you is, will he be coming for you. And because of this Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. You've been listening to the Gospel Message radio program. My name is Wes Hepner. Thanks for being here today. Our website is gospelmessageradio.com where you can listen to these messages or donate to this program if it's been a blessing to you. Our address is Box 1760, Warm in Saskatchewan, Canada, SOK4SO. Our email is gmmradio at sasktel.net and our phone number where you can contact us if you'd like these messages sent or to be part of a group where the messages are sent every week. We love to set that up for you is 306-230-7807. Again, that's 306-230-7807. My name is Wes Hepner for the Gospel Message Radio Program. Thanks for being here. I wish you a wonderful week 
and that you could walk with Jesus.